Give me what to say Let me hear you Clearly define What I am to do Let every word Penetrate the heart Let what is said Leave them running to your arms Use me Lord Use me Lord Go with me to Joshua 1 5 through 9 Joshua 1 5 through 9 There shall be not any man be able to stand before thee in all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with ye. And I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto you the fathers to give them. Verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever Thy goeth. But this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. I'm going to talk to you tonight uh, for the first point about the people. This is a crazy time. Um, uh, the people of the wilderness, when I, I say the people of the wilderness, I'm talking about the people that that Moses was leading, um, you know, he had died. And just about everything they knew, everything they knew about God was because of Moses. And um, they were in a fit of a fit of array. Um, everything was changing. And we, if any, anybody knows anything about change, you know, change is, is scary. Uh, we, should, we, should, we should know that within the last year or so. You know, it was just such a big change, and um, we just had to figure out as we went how, you know, how to live. And it, it's, it's scary. You know, it breeds anxiety, it brings doubt. You know, it, uh, it, just, it just breeds uncertainty. And that's where they were. You know, they, that's where they were. They, they, they were like, you know, uh, wilderness people, and, 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 and now they're getting a new direction from the new leader, who is Joshua, to pursue the promised land. So now they're, they're, they're used to being nomads, you know, all over the place, not really having anything. And now all of a sudden, now you want me, we want me to take ownership of land. So it's, it's a big deal. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal the, uh, as, as far as uh, the mindset of the, of the, of the Israelites. It was, it, was a, it was a big deal. You know, they just was really, really in, in, in shock and awe. And, but, but guess what? God wasn't in shock and all. He knew. He knew what was, what was, what was going to happen. So um, Moses was dead. But guess what? God wasn't dead. <laughs> Moses was dead. But guess what? God wasn't dead. And the people mourned for like 30, uh, uh, 60 and almost 90 days. And then usually when, when somebody dies like this, and according to the, the Old Testament, they would mourn for like 30 days. But after like about 80 days, God turned to Moses and he says, listen, 
as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Don't trip. Yeah, when he turned to Joshua, he says, listen, I don't, I don't even think God even mourned. He just looked over and said, listen, dude, we've got to keep it moving. As I was with Moses, guess what? I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you. And that's what I'm telling you guys tonight. As God was with Moses, guess what? He's going to be with us. He's going to be with us. Let's go a little bit further. Go back, go to Joshua, back to Joshua 1. Joshua 1 and 6. 1 and 6. It says, be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto, unto their fathers to give them. Verse 7, here we go again. Be thou only strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to the law which Moses my servant command thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou goest. Verse 9. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with you wherever, wherever thou goest. So he's like, he's not, he's, not, he's not asking them. He's at the point where, listen, I'm telling you, be strong and be of good courage. I'm commanding you. Why? Because you have some enemies. You have some enemies that are trying to rip your courage and your, and your faith from you. So you've got be, got to be strong in the Lord and of good courage. You've got to be strong in the Lord and in this word. Be strong. Be strong. Because the enemies are trying to take your faith. They're trying to take your faith. And that's the thing about every time we're going through something, every time we go through a trial, every time we go through something that, 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 that confuses us or upset us, the enemy is trying to get us out of faith. He's trying to get us to stop believing what God says about the believer. The Bible said, don't be, don't be ignorant of the, our enemy's devices. We should know what's going on. You know, this is not, it should, uh, for most of us, this is not our first rodeo. We should know well, when the devil comes in like the flood, the Bible says he shall raise up a standard, and that standard is righteousness. He's going to raise it up, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. God is waiting to see if you're going to trust him. I don't know about you, but I'm going to trust him. Look at somebody, look at somebody, look at somebody and say, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust him. I ain't got nothing to say. I don't have any other thing but to do. I can't do nothing but trust him. What you going to do? Hold fast to his word. It's an opportunity to go through. See, we don't look at it like that. We're like, oh, my God, this happened. That happened. Shut up, man. Be quiet. It's, it's an opportunity to trust God so your faith will grow. That's the, that's what, that's what we have to, have to look at, at trials. It's an opportunity to trust God. We're always talking about we're reading the word, reading the word, you know, and doing this and doing that. But when that trial comes, it's like, ah. You know, it's an opportunity to trust God, to put God's word on it, to put God's word on it. That's where we're going. They came out the wilderness. And we Wilderness is, is, is a place of, of confusion. A lot of, a lot of times we're in, confu we're, 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 we're in wilderness situations. Right now, somebody's, somebody's in a wilderness situation. Somebody's going through something right now. Some big change in your life, and you just don't know what to do. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Go to Ephesians 6 and 10. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Listen, he's telling us, listen. We got to be strong. You know, 
And when it says in the power of his mind, it's talking about in the power of his spirit. It's when it says, it says, it says his, and it say mine. It didn't say yours. It said in the power of his spirit, which represent his presence. It represents his presence. Be strong in the power of his might, his word, his spirit. Because you got to fight. We got to fight. Go to 2 Timothy 2 and 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Here we go again. Therefore, my son, he's my daddy. Yes, I'm his son. Be strong. Be strong in the grace. Where is it at? It's in Christ Jesus. I'm in Christ. He's in me. It's representing his presence. Be strong. The, the presence of God is the most stablest place that you can be in. People don't realize that. You know, a lot of times, uh, 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 being in his presence is, is not, you know, based on feeling. The Bible says not walk by feeling. He says walk by sight. Or walk by faith, excuse me, not by sight. He's not saying walk by feeling. We always want to feel something. Man, I, you know, hey, listen, trust me. You live long enough, the power of God is going to hit you a few times. But when it doesn't, that doesn't mean he's not there. Hello, somebody. Don't get, get, don't get caught up in feeling. Because sometimes you might not feel nothing. But guess what? He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He will be right there. He will be right there. Newsflash. The promise is definitely... We're definitely, we're not talking about the, the death of, uh, uh, of Moses. But the promise is not the land. The promise is the presence. His presence. It's not the land. It's his presence. It's no way in the world. It's no way in the world Moses could have did what he did if it wasn't for the presence of God. It's no way. That's why he told, that's why he told uh, 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 Joshua, listen, Doc, I'm going to be with you just like I was with Moses. That's why, that's why you're going to be able to do great things. You know, because I'm going to be in your presence. The Bible says that they that know their God shall do exploits. It's all about knowing him. Once you know, them, know him, you know he's there. You know he's there. That's the great thing about salvation. If you're, try, if you're growing, the great thing about salvation, if you're growing, you begin to know some things. You begin to know some things. And it's not, it's not about, it's not that you don't have to fight. The Bible says you still got to fight a good fight. We understand that the battle is still the Lord's. We, we, we get that part. You know, just, just because we're, we're, we're in, the, his, in the spirit or in his presence, we still, still, it's still something we have to do too. There's something we have to do too. Go to Joshua 1 and 5. It's his presence. Moses is dead, but God's still alive. Joshua 1 and 5. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of their life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor shall I forsake thee. So he's giving him a good, great pep talk. Because, you know, it's not, you know, he's a set man now. You know, it's not, like he, was, he, was, he was a minister to Moses. You know, he was helping Moses out. Now Moses is dead. Now guess what? The mantle was passed to him. He's a set man. He says, listen, now you got to not, listen, now I, this, this is not just something personal, but now you got you to deal with the people too. You got to be an example before the people. Be strong, my brother. Because I'm just like Moses. You know, all the, you know how great Moses was? Moses, I, I, I don't know anybody that had a face-to-face -face conversation with God but Moses. Moses was probably the greatest. He was probably the, 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 the greatest, greatest prophet uh, that there ever was. Some of the things that he did was, it was unbelievable. So now it's not about the experience and the wisdom. It's about the presence. Don't worry about Moses. Don't, don't, don't worry about what Moses did. <laughs> Just worry about what I'm going to do with you. And don't even worry about it. Just walk in it. 
Walk in it. That's what God's telling us today. Walk in it. Stop looking at the problem and look at the, at the, at the word. Stop looking at the problem and look at the promise. Get in your book. Get in the book. Get in the words of the work and get in you. Hello, somebody. God is waiting on us. He's already done his part. He's already done his part. And guess what? He is not done yet. He is not done yet. So Joshua 1 and 5 says, Thou shalt not, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of, our, of, of your life. Not just one day. He said, all the days. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Oh, my God. You feel like Superman. You know, walking... <laughs> It, 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 that, is, that, that, that just gives you so that's why you have to get in the word so God so you can have the same mindset as Jesus let this mind that was also in Christ Jesus also be in us hello somebody we got to be able to see what he say, sees and react on it that's what God is expecting out of his out of, out of, out of, out of, out of the sons of God, out of, out of his, 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 his maturing believers. That's what he expects. He, he expects us to walk by faith and not by sight. Stop questioning what I ask you to do. Just do it. <laughs> I was the one to turn your darkness into light. I was the one that gave you a new life. Just follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Go to John 14 and 16. 16 to 18. 16 through 18. And I will pray to the Father. And he should give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, when the world cannot receive him. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, nor knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and he shall be in you. In verse 18, it says, And I will never leave you comfortless. And I will come to you. So he said, in the, in, in the, in the Old Testament, he was, he was with them. In the New Testament, after the resurrection, after Christ's resurrection, guess what? He's not just with us. He's not just with us, but he's in us. He's in us. And it says, he, he's saying that you should, listen, neither know him, but ye know him. You, you know him, for, the, for he dwelleth with you, and he shall be in you. So, his presence is with us. There's something that you should know that he's there. Sometimes the power of God, sometimes the, 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 he manifests his presence in a mighty way. And it's like, oh my. You know he's there. Sometimes he manifests himself through, through, the, through the speaking of tongues. Boom. And all of a sudden, oh my. He, I, you know he's there. And sometimes he don't do nothing. And we still should be saying, oh my, I know he's there. Because it's by faith, it's not by feeling. It's by faith, it's not by feeling. Start getting caught up in feeling. Yeah, we, we, we shout and we praise and we lift God up, and that's, that's what God expects. He, he expects that. You know, the word of God is for us. You know, but the praise is for God. There was every, 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 everything that has breath does what? Give God the praise. You know, when, I, when you get my word, I want your praise. You act like you don't owe me nothing. I need you to praise me. He, said, every, he says, anything that's not dead, anything that's not dead, give me some praise. Anything that's not dead, give me some praise. 1 John 3 and 24. First John 3 and 24. And he that keepeth his commandments dwell in him, 
and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. So we know. You know, it's, it's, it's a great thing to be born again, but it's a, it's, a, it's a greater thing to be filled with his spirit. Because when we're filled with the spirit, it gives us the ability to be spiritual. His word is spiritual. You have to have the spirit of God to understand what God is saying to you. To get a revelator, get a revelation from God, you've got to be spiritual. You know, it's, it's, no way, it's no way around it. You have, we, we have to be spiritual. That's why we, we need to be digging in this word so we're knowing what God, we know what everybody else is saying but God. What kind of garbage is that? Every, and, we're, and, and you can't be just telling us where we go and who our past is but can't tell us nothing about God. That's some garbage. I'm telling you right now, that's, that's that, you know, the one thing about I've, I've learned down through the years. Our growth in God is not for you. Your growth in God is for somebody else. You know, we think, you know, I'm getting, you know, I'm good. That's, that's, the, that's the carnal mind of a believer. You know, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting all this word. No, dude, you're getting all this root, this, this word to give away, to give grace, to give grace to somebody else, to help somebody else, to encourage somebody else the way God wants you to encourage them, not the way you want. I'm not talking people full of leather, but they ain't full of the spirit. Full of leather, dry as a Sahara desert, but not full of the spirit. Spirit gives life. The spirit, the spirit, the spirit, the, the, the letter kills us, but the spirit makes alive. You know when somebody been with Jesus. The Pharisees, Sadducees, and all the deep folk said so they took note of, of Jesus' disciples because they had been with Jesus. You can tell when somebody been with Jesus. You can tell when somebody has been with the word because they, you know, what they're saying is not from their vocabulary. It's from the word. It's from their inner man. It's from the spirit in them. And that's what God wants from us. If, listen, if my spirit's in you, guess what? I'm with you. It's about, it's about the, the power of his presence, man. I mean, it's... Uh, the power of his presence just makes you feel it doesn't matter, you can be surrounded by it. you can be sur surrounded by hell, you don't even care all you care is that Jesus is here and, and, and so what? I don't even care, matter of fact it, the, Bible, the Bible talks about being in his presence you can, it, pre being in his presence causes you to rest you can rest in his presence because you know he's got your back he's got my back And that's what he's looking for. He's sitting high. He's going to do it. He's doing what he did to, to Stephen. He's standing up. He's standing up. That's my, that's my son down there. Look how he's rolling. He ain't even bending. He ain't even. He's just standing there, taking it, letting God be glorified. That's what God's looking at. He ain't looking at no title, no position. He's looking at, is, is my son being developed in that believer right there? Can I, see, can I see myself in him? Go to Colossians 1 and 27. Colossians, Colossians 1 and 27. <clears throat> To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's a, it's, a, it's a mystery. It's a mystery to the world that Christ can be in us. And it's sad to say it's a mystery to some believers that Christ can be in them. Because they ain't taking, they, they're not doing, they're, 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 not, they're, not, they're not examining themselves. You know, the Spirit of God will check you. He will convict you. The Bible says, he shall convict you of sin. So it's not, that, it's not, like, it's not like you don't know. You're just overriding him, which is dangerous. Very dangerous. But Christ in you, 
the hope of God. When it says Christ in you, he says, listen, everything that God has, Christ has. And it's in you, so that means you have everything that God has. Whether it be manifested or not, it's in you. See, when, you, when, when we start knowing these things, you know, it, it, we start going through things, going through, when we really know these things and, and apply them to our life, and, and we start going through things, we start giving God the glory. We start giving him the praise. Because we know he's worthy. He, we know that he's working something in, out of us so he can put something else in us. Hello, somebody. Stop tripping. If you're a child of God, guess what? We're in God's hand. And I know it's easier said than done, but keep growing. Keep getting in his word. Keep letting him have his way. He's going to start imparting things in you that you never could get in any kind of way. Like I said before, when we, start, when we go through things, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. Paul said, oh, that I might know him by the... Uh, by, the, by, the, by, by his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Oh, that I might know. It's, it's something about when we're going through that we get more serious about knowing Jesus. Got a big old Bible. <laughs> but see, he wants us to do that. So he wants us, he wants us to, to be our, our, our daily practice. He doesn't, doesn't want us to do this when we're going through. When, we, when we're going through. You know, this is, our, this is a lifestyle. This is a lifestyle. God expects us to be like him. I know there's only one son of God, but it's a whole bunch of born again son of gods. And God expects us to grow in the grace and the knowledge of his son Jesus. He expects that. That's some serious stuff. It's serious stuff. It's time out. We can see it's time out. In this last year, you can see it's time out for foolishness. It's time out. It's time to get serious. It's time to let God say, let God know, have your way. God, you can have your way with me. I'm tired. I'm tired. I, 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 I need some insight. I want to grow now. Help me to grow. Help me to stand. Help me to walk worthy. Help me to us is looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. God, help me to look to you first. Help me to look to you first. Help me to walk and act like I know you. Because I do. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give God some praise. Right there, right there in your living room, right there, wherever, you, wherever you're sitting at, just go ahead and give God some praise. He said, let everything that have breasts, give, 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 give him some praise. He, he didn't say, he said, it don't matter if you're white, black, it doesn't matter if you're uh, Latino, China, don't matter, Pentecostal, Baptist, Lutheran, Methodist, D don't care, sinner, backslider, don't matter. Give God some praise. Glory. Give God some praise. Why? Because he's worthy. He's worthy of all the praise and all the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you right now. Thank you right now. Thank you right now, Lord. Thank you right now. Thank you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. My last point is priority. We gotta start putting some things in. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta have some priorities. You know, whatever we wanna do, we do it. Whatever, whatever, whatever we have value, you know, we figure out a way to do it, right? So we gotta, put, we gotta have some, we gotta have some priorities. It's something, we want God to do everything, but it's something that we have to do too. Go to Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua 1 and 8. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of the mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success.
You know, a lot of times we say good success. I think the world makes success, makes, is, you know, we bling blinging and driving this and got this and live over here. But that's not, that ain't, that's not the success of God. I'm not saying it's, it's some, there's, some, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as it doesn't have you. You know, you have it. You can let it go anytime you feel like it because you know God is my reward, not having things that will pass and perish with the using of them. These temporal things, I cannot get caught up in this garbage. I got to have more God in me to let me know to listen. That's some garbage. Your flesh wants that, but you know what? You don't need that. You know, I, I can help you look down the, real, down the road. That's a bill, and you're going to get sick of it. You know, sometimes, 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 grooms are like little, like little boy, like little kids. You know, they play for a little while and they throw it in the corner. See, but so, this junk being grown, you can't throw that in no corner. You just gotta, you gotta payment. <laughs> Man, you gotta keep paying on that bad boy. So you know, it's really, it's, 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 it's great to have the wisdom of God. You know, you gotta ask God for His wisdom. You know. Uh, you, listen, you, you have now because you asked that. We, we need the wisdom of God. So I'm going to be making these dumb mistakes. Like we've all made mistakes and, and making mistakes. Jasper 1 and 8 says, The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. But thou mayest, that thou mayest observe to do according to that which is, which is written therein. For thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. He's saying, listen, stay in the word, man. Listen, you, listen if you're not going through, you, you're getting ready to go through. If you're, if you're not in it, you got, you got, listen, you got to have the word in you so the word of God will put you in his presence. To realize, I'm in his presence. I'm in his presence. So it don't matter what I come against, God's got this. God's got this. We have to understand God's got, and it's sad to say most believers don't even have a devotional outside of church. They come to church, hear the word, don't even take notes, ain't even got no Bible. Go back to the crib, wait till next week, next Sunday. What about Wednesday? Don't they come to Wednesday? See, I'm, see, see, they're not building their self up in their most holy faith. You got to have a devotional. How, many, how, how often do you at church? You know, we're not at church that much. Even when we were coming to church regularly, back in the day. But still, you have so much time out of here than you do in here. So guess what? You have to build yourself up. You got to continue to build yourself up so you can be spiritual, so you can walk in the spirit, so you know that you're in the presence of God, because you got to realize that God's presence has power. We got to stay, you, you got to stay in his presence. We got to stay in his presence. We have to understand that we need to have devotional because the devotional makes an anchor. You know, it stables us. You know, you know because you, the word is always working. You know, he's working the will and the do of, 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 of our good nature in us. You know, but, you gotta, but we have to consume it. And we have to consume it to, to change, not to consume to say I read some scripture. I consume, you know, I, you know, I read, I, you know, I went through March. I went through Mark, Mark all last, no, dude. Listen, read to change. Read to be like Jesus. Lord, help me to, give me, put the desire in me to, to read this word so I can change, so I can think like you, so I can act like you. Help me to read this word so I can be like you. You know, sometimes you got to read stuff over and over again uh, to understand what he's saying to you. But you have to do it. We can't be so much hurt. We're so much in a hurry to do all this stuff, do all this stuff, to do all this stuff, you know, and we're going to church and we're just as carnal as one of them seats sitting there. That's some garbage, man. You know, you don't want to be there because you know why? Opportunities are coming. And a lot of times opportunities is bigger, are bigger than your faith. You're going to get scared and you should have took it. You know, God is building us up for, not just for opportunities, but he's building, he's building us up for battles. Because <laughs> it's a continual fight. Don't ever forget that. It's, it's, it can, it's a continual fight. And it's, it, guess what? The Bible says it's a good fight. It's a good fight. I read the end of it. We, are, we won. We won. It's a good fight. It's a good fight. Devotional is... 
are like the breakfast of champions. It fires you up because the Bible says, who knows what a day may bring? You don't know what's going to happen. None of us do. We don't know what's going to happen. We do not know what tomorrow is going to bring. Go to Jeremiah 9, 29 and 13. Yes, we have to learn to consecrate ourselves. You know, we got to have, learn to have devotions at, at home. You know, because see, I'm going to tell you what the problem is. The problem is this. We don't, you can tell folks don't have no devotion at home because when they get to church, you got to prime and pump and pump and prime because they ain't doing nothing to the crib. But people that are consistently doing this, you start, the spirit come in, it's like, they don't even care. They don't care about nobody else because they're conditioned to believe. They're conditioned, they're conditioned to be sensitive to the spirit. And that's what devotionals do. They cause us to be sensitive to the move of God. And we're not even in church. But when we do come to church, don't let the spirit get high. Don't let the work get good. Because you'll mess around and jump up and give God some glory and don't even care what nobody's thinking. Hello. Hello, somebody. Jeremiah 29 and 13. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with your whole heart. Oh my God. It, this ain't no part time, this ain't no part time, this ain't no part time seeking. You know, because God is, God is God. He knows what you're thinking before you even think it. So he knows. He, he knows, you know, if you really want to entertain his presence, uh, presence at any time, in any place. You know, like a lot of times you'd be riding down the road and all of a sudden, bam, there he is, riding down the road. Or a song will come on. All of a sudden, the glory comes in the, the glory comes in the car. Hello, somebody. Tears start coming down your eyes. Oh my God, the glory of the Lord is in my ride. Hello, somebody. That's what I'm talking about. And a lot of times, you know, a lot of times, like I said, it's, it's not about feeling, but every now and then when he shows up like that, it's like, oh my God, this is this is the bomb. I don't care if anybody, I don't care if nobody believes it. I'm, 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 I'm hanging in this, and I'm going to get some more. I'm going to add to it. I'm going to add to what I have. I'm not playing with this. I'm not playing with this. I'm going to add to what I have. Hello, somebody. Go to Matthew 6 and 3. Everybody should know this. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. The first thing you do is seek the kingdom. Then when you get these things, you know, you can give them away. Because, you know, they, they don't really mean that much. You know, a lot of things that we think we want when we get them, we like, man, I shouldn't, I should. I'm going to find get my money back. <laughs> I'm serious. Sometimes we get some stuff, we be like, oh, my. Yeah, for about a week or two, you got, yeah, you got the receipt. I want to take my money back. <laughs> I don't want, I don't need this. This is some garbage. Priorities. The, per, the, per, per, the priority is like, put me first. Put me first. Put me first. So I can order your steps. I'm closing. I'm closing with this, though. You remember the three Hebrew, bro, the Hebrew uh, boys? Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego. When the king of Nebuchadnezzar threw them in the fiery furnace. Because they would not bow to Baal. And he, that, it was so hot that the couple of people that threw them in there got, that got killed. They killed them. And, and Nebuchadnezzar was like, turn it up as high as it can go. Turn it up, turn it up. And he looked in there and he said, we just put three. Didn't we just put three in there? He goes, my God, there's four in there. And one looks like the son of God. I'm telling you guys, I don't care what you go through. God is going to be with you. I'm not just talking, I'm not just talking about what I read a, a, a year ago, March 27th. Man, I, I got sick. 
I got COVID. They took me to the hospital, and they, 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 they put a, a respirator on me. I was, I was out for six days. When I came through, uh, they said, man, you are one lucky guy. He says, listen, you ain't out the woods yet. He said, but dude, we would thought you were gone. And when I knew what was going on and what, you know, I just went like an autopilot. I started pray- I ain't never praised God like that. I ain't never worshiped God like that in my life. I mean, it was like, it was like a hurricane of praise, I mean, a hurricane of worship. And, that, you know, and the thing about it, uh, you know, when I started getting better, I, I, didn't need, I didn't need oxygen no more, and it let me go. When I got home, I was so weak, it was another fight. I was so weak, I couldn't even bathe myself. For, I mean, it was like a month. I still couldn't eat nothing. I couldn't taste nothing. You know, I was all messed up. You know, it was a fight. It was a fight. It was a good fight, but it was a test of my faith. Oh, my God. I thank God I was praising God, getting in his word, and, 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 and letting God have his way. I was in, Because, man, when I needed it, it was there. And I think, I, listen, I, I think when I was out six days, I, I was thanking God for the prayers of the saints that availeth much. Oh, my God. I hope I've given you hope today and encouraged your hearts. Put your hands together for the word of God. Father, we just thank you and praise you for your goodness and tender mercy, love the divine. Father, there's no one like you nowhere. We just lift you up. We thank you for the word tonight, Father. Oh, God, we thank you for your presence, Father. Give us a mind, for, Father, to search the scriptures. Give us a mind to meditate day and night, Father. And we ask you, Father, to have your way in the name of Jesus. Now, bless us, Father, as we leave this, leave this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Give me what to say. Let me hear you. Thank you for listening. If this teaching has been a blessing to you and you'd like to partner with our ministry to share the message of Jesus Christ, please visit our website at www.hmclive.org and click the donate button. If you're in our area, we invite you to join us at 4317 Lippincott Boulevard, Burton, Michigan, 48519, Harris Memorial, Church of God in Christ, teaching the truth, and showing the love. Use me, Lord.